And so this morning, as we think about where it is that we need to find the illumination of Christ in our own lives, we're called to look at our own selves, our own relationships with each other, and to work out how we might be at peace. Peace with who we are as individuals. Now, I know many of us have done a long, searching journey about making peace with ourselves. Last night, I went to see Milk for the second time. And, and uh, I will say that it was just a wonderful experience uh, being at the Sherman Oaks Galleria. Um, it's a new arc light movie house over there, and I love the arc lights because you get to choose which seats you get. Um, and, and so we went with uh, a couple of folks from church, and uh, we were sat uh, having, having dinner at Fuddruckers. I think, is that what it's called? Yeah. That's what it's called? It's really good food. And, uh, and two other members of our congregation were sat over on the other corner, and they were going to see Harvey Milk last night, and one of them's here with us this morning. And then we're sat outside, and, and two women from our congregation went past. They just finished watching Milk, and so it was almost like a social gathering at the, at the Galleria last night. I was running here and running there and saying hello to all sorts of different people, <laughs> you know, as only you can. <laughs> inner peace. I think Harvey Milk talked to us about how when you live in the closet for so many years in your own life, that it's so difficult then to make sense of who you have been created to be. And he talked about how in those last years of his life, when he, you know, from 40 to 49 when he was assassinated, that by making peace with himself, he was able to make a difference in the world by acknowledging who he was, by dealing with all of the demons from his life, from really respecting who he had been created to be, that by that acceptance of who he was, by allowing the light to illuminate the pathway within his own self, it was only at that moment when he was true about who he was that real peace came and that he was able to make the difference. Isn't that a wonderful testimony for us this morning as we think about the advent light of peace? Yes, of course, we all want world peace. I, more than most, I'm sure, want to see an end to war and to an end to the trillions of dollars that we are continuing to spend on a day-to-day -day basis. Doesn't it seem ironic that we're spending so much money on war when the reality is that even here at home, people are now struggling financially and economically? and are dealing with chaos in their own lives. It's, it's really disheartening to, to travel on the streets of Los Angeles and to see homes that are up for sale, and they're not up for sale because people have chosen to sell them, but they're up for sale because the bank has repossessed them. So many people who are being disenfranchised from their homes. Just this week, receiving an email from a member of our own congregation who asked us to pray for her son, at this time of the year, who has lost his job. To think about our own sister, Lucia, who's having to move and is still struggling financially in her own life. Laura Law, who's having to return to South Africa tomorrow for chaos and crisis that is happening in her own life. I'm sure that I could walk around this congregation and hear your own stories of, of disconnect and that sense of where is tomorrow. And this morning we're invited as we light this Advent candle of, of allowing the light of Christ to come and be our peace. We're invited to, to find a peace that not the world gives, but to find the peace that Christ alone can give. A peace that knows that there will be a better tomorrow. A, a peace that knows that when we share in fellowship with one another, we are better together. You know, I would hate to think what it must be like to be completely isolated and on your own when you're facing all of the darkness that there is in our life. Aren't we so blessed that we have the opportunity to come into this place? And, and we invite you, you know, we, we don't ask you to keep your problems outside the church. We invite you to bring them in so that you bring your whole selves in so that we together can be better and we together can help to solve some of the, the crises. And if we, even if we can't solve them, to walk alongside one another in them. Isn't that one of the great joys of being a fellowship of Christ? 
that we get, if we truly want to be honest about what's going on in our lives, that we are no longer alone. Not only do we have the light of Christ, but we have the light of one another right. to share with us in that journey, to be alongside us in that journey. So this morning, as we think about that light of Christ that comes to us in the midst of our darkness to bring us peace, we're invited to do two things, I think. One is we're invited to be honest about who we are, to reconcile the demons that work within our own lives. And if that means that we need to go and seek therapy, or we need to, you know, in the old-fashioned church, the old Pentecostals, we come down and lay hands on one another and, and cast the demons out. As if Reverend Alex is our Pentecostal amongst us and he talks about how we need to cast the demons out. And I sit there sometimes as a more liberal and thinking, oh, I don't like that language. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, there are demons in our lives. The things that have haunted us for a long time. And uh, to think about how we can cast those things out so that they have no more power over us. But rather we can reconcile them within our own lives to find ways in which we can be at peace with ourselves. So that by being at peace with ourselves, we can then begin to generate peace in our relationships with one another and to generate a peace of the world, to bring about reconciliation. And the second thing that I think that we're being invited to this morning is to come authentically into this house of worship, to trust the sisters and brothers that are around you, and allow them to walk with you, to journey with you, to journey with one another in the crises of our lives. Not to hide them, not to be shameful of them, but rather to acknowledge them. The 12 step groups say that unless you acknowledge what's going on in your life, you can do nothing about it. And so this morning we're invited to acknowledge the fears that we might have, the disconnect that we might have, the questions and doubts of faith that we might have and to allow them to be real so that we could together can be better and do something together about them. In the midst of darkness, there is the light of peace and you and I are invited this morning to step into that peace, a peace that passes all understanding and as Jesus says, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God. May that be our blessing this morning as we light this second Advent wreath candle and as we journey through this season in preparation for Christmas. God's blessing upon you this morning and would you pray with me? Sovereign and Almighty One, I believe that we're all in need of that peace that passes all understanding. That we're in need of that peace to shed light into our lives so that we can be at peace with ourselves and to be at peace with the circumstances that many of us face right at this very moment. Many of us are facing hardship. Many of us are facing questions and doubts about what the new year is going to bring. Some of us are facing questions about employment and housing. And some of us are facing dilemmas in our lives that we need that peace of Christ to be present. And so I ask God that as we invite that peace into our lives that we might also do some of the hard work because we need to show up and we need to embrace the presence of Christ. So allow us, God, to journey with you in this season of Advent and may, in the midst of our own darkness, may we see the light of hope and may we see the light of peace. Bless us. In Jesus' name.